because I, I was working there when we got married because I, I kept working for a little while, but my husband was a hoistman at the Crescent. And he had to work some nights, they alternated days and night shifts, you know. And uh, so finally he said, you know, I, we don't, you don't make enough money to, to, you need to stay home. And of course I had to get him lunch and get him off to work, you know, and he worked at night and what happened in the daytime he had to sleep. And uh, that was another thing. He had, he had an apartment up over the post office in that building. That's where we were living because he, he had rented an apartment up there. He had a house in Victor, but uh, he didn't he didn't live in it. He finally let it go, but uh, he had an apartment up there. And so I moved up there with him. And uh, so I met one of the ladies down the hall. Her husband was a big, he was the electrician over at the mill when they, after they built the mill. And uh, we, she, we got so, she dabbed me to come down and have coffee. I, I never was much of a coffee drinker, but she'd say, I made some coffee, why don't you come down and have a cup of coffee? So I went down several mornings, or every morning, she'd have the coffee on. And in the meantime, like I say, Jean was trying to work at night, and these ladies in the building, they didn't realize that you have your transom open and everything that goes on in that building you can hear. And he said, we got to find some place else to live. He said, you know, they get out in that hall and they start talking and they bang doors and, they, you know, all this commotion going on. He said, I'm, he said, one of the company houses is going to be open, vacant. The people are moving out. They're moving to Victor. And he said, I'm going to talk to Charlie about renting that house. So he said, I want you to call that woman that, that was moving out they, and uh, ask if we can come talk to her. I can come talk to her husband because I want to know about the water and things about, and the furnace. There was a furnace in that house too. He said, I need to, to find out about that stuff. So I called her and she said, oh sure, come on down. Uh, about 6.30, is that okay? And I said, yeah, if it's with you, it's fine. So I told Jean, I said, well, there, she, 6.30 this evening, we'll go down and you can talk to that guy and get whatever you need. So she and I visited, you know, and she said something about, are you and Jean getting married? I said, I don't know. I said, we've been married for about six or seven months now. I said, we're living up in the post office building, but it's kind of noisy when he's trying to work, you know, at night and, and then have to sleep in the daytime. So we just want to get out in a house where it's more peace and quiet. And she, well, she understood, so so we visited for a while, and the next morning, Betty called me, and she said, coffee's on? I said, okay, I'll be right there. So I went down, and we had got our coffee, and we sat down, and finally she said, Terry, I want to ask you something, but I, she said, I hope you don't get mad. And I said, no, what's the matter, Betty? And she said, are you pregnant? And I said, no, why? And she said, well, so-and-so called me this morning and wants to give you a baby shower. Found out we were married, so she decided I was pregnant. Well, I hit the ceiling again. I said, you call that woman, you tell her I am not pregnant and I don't need a baby shower. And two years later, I had a baby shower. <laughs> and he was married, of course, and uh, they had uh, some children and I don't know what happened, but they got divorced. And there was a girl, Muriel, and there was uh, Jean, uh, and uh, there, wasn't, there wasn't any other, just the two kids, I think. Anyway, he worked at the mill down there, I think when the, the Golden Cycle, I don't know if it was Golden Cycle then or what it was, but anyway, he worked there and then then they came up here to Victor, and they lit, Matt, he told me they lived over here at the Portland Mine for several years when he, he was real young, you know, and uh, about the big hole in back, you know, you could see <laughs> down in the mine. <laughs> and so I don't know how come he, he, to apply for it or why he got it, but he became the postmaster in the late 30s in Victor. And he, he worked there till, till he retired in the, 50s, I guess it was. Well, it used to be up on Victor Avenue in a building now that's owned by some of the Beals's when I was a kid, and I never did know who owned it, 
But my grandmother used to talk about uh, this woman all the time and, and uh, visiting with her and seeing her. And I, I never could figure out about this woman. And I finally asked, uh, I asked my aunt or somebody one time who this woman was. And she was the one that owned this bar across the street from uh, where I was born. Mm -hmm. and, and when I was a kid, it was called the gold coin. Next thing I knew, it moved down on the corner there where, it is, where the mine building is now, the offices are in there. And the moved in on that corner and there was a man by the name of Russ Sullivan and Lil Clark that uh, bought it and had had it. And she had the best food. She was the best cook, you know, everybody knew what a wonderful restaurant that was. And it, I'll never forget it was, I don't remember what year it was our anniversary, but our anniversary's in July. And I said to Jean one day, I said, you know, I said, we never go any place for our anniversary. We had four kids, you know. And I said, we never go out to dinner or anything. I said, why don't we get a babysitter and go down to Lil's and, and for, our, for dinner, you know, for our anniversary. So he come home and he said, we gotta be at Lil's at three o'clock for dinner, or yeah, five o'clock for dinner. I said, oh my God, I gotta get a babysitter. No, you don't. He said, we're taking the kids too. Well, I have seen people come in there with kids. And you know kids, they knock over a glass or they drop something on the floor and she throws a god off screaming, cussing fit about, about it. Watch your damn kid and don't let him do this, you know, and goes on. And I said, I'm not gonna go through that. And one of the kids will knock something over and it'll be a disaster, you know. Oh, it will not, he said, You're, we're gonna be there at five o'clock. I said, okay. So went down there and she had put two tables together, put a nice plastic tablecloth on it. She put a, Danny was just two or three years old, you know, fixed a seat for him to sit on there. And, and we had fried chicken dinner and everybody ate their food and nobody complained about anything. Nobody spilled anything. Everything was just perfect. And there was a couple of guys in there that used to come here in the summer. And they were in there and they knew how I, you knew how Clill was, you know, what she did and how she did it and how I felt about and all this stuff. And later he told me, he said, we just knew you were about to have a heart attack thinking something was gonna happen. And I said, he said, we were just waiting to see if, if she'd throw one of her fits or whatever. but. She never, nothing happened. She never said a word. We, we ate, everybody ate their food and we got up and left and no problem. I couldn't believe it. I just knew that the minute, cause I, I heard her, when I worked for her, she'd run and lock the door rather than let somebody with kids come in there.